Zephyr is a modular operating system, so you only have to include the components that you really need when you're building up an application. This lets it be used in resource-constrained environments where Linux is just too big. While the main development tree incorporates the latest technologies as they emerge, we recognize that this isn't always ideal for product makers, which is why we adopted the policy of creating a long-term stable release every two years so that the product makers can count on just being able to look and keep an eye on for the security fixes, any key bug updates, and not have to track all the active development in the um, main development release. When we started the project five years ago, we wanted to build on the best practices that we found in other open source projects, one of which was taking security very seriously. Zephyr is one of the few open source projects that is actually a CVE numbering authority, uh, listed with MITRE, or CNA as it referred to, and actually has a project security incident response team or PCERT, and that team is responsible for monitoring the vulnerabilities um, as they emerge and then working the embargo windows to get fixes up there and have them included in those long-term stable releases. Last year we saw three products based on Zephyr emerge very quickly um, to address the uh, tracking and distancing requirements for managing COVID-19. Phytex Distancer, Intelinium's uh, Smart Pods, and uh, most recently uh, from their connectivity, the Centrius product. The code base enabled this rapid time to market illustrates that we're starting to achieve our goals for the project. From the start of the project, uh, we knew we wanted to be able to use Zephyr in safety critical applications. With our upcoming LTS2 this year, the foundations will be in place for the project to actually be able to go through more formal certifications like 61508. However, we're already starting to see Zephyr being used in products where there are safety considerations involved from some of our member companies. One example of this is the Oticom More Hearing Aid, which just got released in January. This whole hearing aid line is now being based on Zephyr. Because it's obviously interacting with the human body, there are safety elements that need to be concerned, and so Oticon could release a product. Some other recent examples of products that are now available on the market include the Adero tags and taglets. These are tags that let you sort of keep things together so that when you're traveling or when there's things you don't want to forget, uh, you put your tag on a main, like a backpack, and then you put taglets on things you want to make sure to stay with that backpack. Or, you know, when I'm traveling, you know, I want to make sure my passport's available, things like that. These are very small. They're running Zephyr. They're communicating to this the taglet, which is then communicating to cell phone. So power is going to be a consideration and um, extremely much a definition of resource constraint. Another example of product that's out in the market is the NAR smart box that was released as it was a Kickstarter a couple years ago. The creators actually work on the software for it. That's how we learned about it. This is a smart SSD device and what it does is it enables photographers when they're in the field or videographers to um, offload the SSD cards and then when you're back in your office you can be plugging your SSD drive in and not have to wait through the whole cycle of offloading before you can start processing working on your images. Another product that's out there with Zephyr right now is an IoT gateway from Regato. This gateway sets up a Bluetooth network and lets you communicate to other Wi-Fi and so forth. Zephyr is being run on one of the cores that is managing the Bluetooth connectivity. So Zephyr is handling the Bluetooth connectivity and then another core is handling the rest of the communication interfaces and running Linux. So very much distinct functions and distinct functionality. This is uh, a new product that's called the OB4. It's the magic radio that has FM radio, Bluetooth, and some built-in synthesis. This speaker is for everyone that's either into just listening to music in their kitchen, but it's also for studio people that use, can use it as kind of a, a really nice sounding portable studio monitor. Inside is actually three different CPUs, where it's one that runs the Bluetooth LE radio, it's running Zephyr. In many of our products, we use uh, Zephyr for the radio parts, and it's mainly because we need access to the radio stack because we're not only doing like product to phones, we're also doing product to product. So we can do both, uh, you know, being central for accessories as well as being part of a bigger uh, wireless ecosystem. And we also have a product called the OPC, which is uh, our latest like portable synthesizer that also has a combination of three different CPUs, one for the audio, one for the user interface and one for the radio, uh, whereas the radio is running Zephyr, but it's also doing other duties. But it's a really powerful advanced uh, you know, music instrument, drums, synths, sequence, you can control other things.